Okay, so today I'm on a Zoom call to California with uh, Nathan Horrocks, the, the founder of Equine Productions, who's just uh, released a great fanfare, the uh, the film short The Fall. Um, Nathan has been well. Thanks very much for talking to me, uh, Green, and talk to me. By the way, it's been released to high acclaim, and it was uh, from what I've read, it was your brainchild, but one that's been germinating for a few years. It has, yeah. I mean, going back, going back around three years, actually, Simon. And um, you know, thank you for having me on. It's 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 always great to talk about um, you know the you know the, the the projects that we're constantly working on. But um, this one has been a bit of a passion project of mine, really, for the last three years. Like I mentioned, it uh, it came out of a um, you know a short story that I'd for, for whatever reason started to write um, on my phone one morning. And I'm not a writer, Simon. You know, let's let's get this straight. I mean, I'm hugely dyslexic and even my uh, old school teacher from Wensleydale secondary school would be laughing his head off that uh, Horrocks who used to stare out the window all day in English class is, is actually written a you know written a story and and, and finally a script but um it came out of um you know some experiences I've gone through with my own kind of mental health struggles really and um and this story uh, kind of fell out of me and and, and then became a, a script and um you know and then and shortly a, a movie really but um it's been a long process getting it to actually become a film um you know a lot of people have put a lot of work and effort into it um you know i know it, it, it's a short film 21 minutes and nine seconds long it's actually a scene from a larger a larger story but um with the budget restrictions that we had to make the film um you know it was it was it was about the uh, the car journey home after a, a bad day at work which we've all you know, I'm sure we've all uh, experienced at some point in time, but I wanted to show the experience of what it's like for a, uh, you know, for an athlete in particular, you know, a, a jockey after having a having a bad day at the work. And it was, uh, I think it was announced that it was going in, into production on World Suicide Day. I assume that wasn't a coincidence. No, no, I kind of wanted to highlight, uh, you know, the fact that this, um, you know, that the, the film went and was going into production on, on that day. And, um, you know, it's dedicated to two, uh, to two former jockeys, James Banks and, um, and Liam Treadwell, you know, who, who won the Grand National. Um, it was after, you know, their deaths. Um, it really kind of hit home for me. Um, cause I'd lost, a, you know, a, a, a couple of people that year, uh, former, you know, colleagues in the racing fraternity, uh, uh, Dean Crossman, who was actually my valet when I was race riding and, uh, a chap called Michael Curran, who, um, who, who was worked for John Gosden for many years. Um, and you know, it was a lot of people know him from the racing industry and, um, you know, unfortunately he, he, he'd taken his own life as well. So you know, pardon my language, but it was it was a kick up the ass that I needed to do something with this um, with this story. And after you know Liam had, had passed and James had passed, I, I I really needed to do something with with writing the script and showed it to um to Paul Struthers actually from the Professional Jockeys Association. He was the person that kind of ignited the um, the idea that I I had to do something with this. Um, I, you know, it was at the at the time all I've ever done with Equine Productions and you know and likes of Jockey Cam is is to help promote the sport. Um, I've never really gone down the route of um, you know making a drama. Um, you know, I've never worked with actors before, so it was. Um, it was exciting that uh, you know Paul saw the scripts and said, "Look, you know, got to do something with this." He then passed it on to um, to Sam Hillier actually from the Even Keel Foundation, who um, who who was almost uh, you know was as excited about it as he was. She uh, runs this uh, charity that uh, helps uh, men with mental health after her losing her husband uh, to suicide and. Uh, you know, we managed to get some money together, and then it was uh, when Nigel Payne who um, is the chair at the uh, Sir Peter O'Sullivan Charitable Trust. Once he got involved, uh, that's when we really knew that we were going to actually, uh, you know, create this film and, uh, and get it out there. And then they were the, you know, major partners of, of, get, of getting this film created. And, and that's why we announced it on uh, World Suicide Day. And, uh, you know, thankfully, it's the, the, the racing community have really taken it on board and, and run with it, really. OK, now you're, you're in America now. Um, so where was it filmed and how long did it take you to get it together, especially in the current environment? Well, uh, Great question, Simon, because, um, you know, like all these things, they do take a lot of time to prepare. You know, a lot of pre-production went into this and um, we weren't ready for COVID. Um, you know, we just got the funding 
and then bang, COVID hit, you know, and we, we weren't sure we were ever going to be able to get it made. And then there was a short window in December because um, I'd, I'd moved to uh, California in, in, in the September of the same year. But um, there was a short window in December where we could actually physically film on track, you know, racing had opened up and Ascot had been absolutely amazing with us. Uh, they, they enabled us to, you know, film in the uh, changing rooms there and, um, you know, where the, where the film starts. And um, they were great. So we felt we had three days to shoot this. And um, it was it was all hands on deck. Unfortunately, it was you know it was and there was a lot of restrictions. You know we had to all be tested, and it was uh, you know it was a big uh, you know big production. You know I think there was something like fifteen people working on this film. And uh, and the great thing about it was was uh, you know we were able to have uh, you know Robert Bathurst, famed from Cold Feet and Downton Abbey, on board, uh, who uh, helped me co-direct this, but also helped me kind of you know, give more structure to the characters that were in the film. And um, he was a huge help at, uh, you know, uh, bring, you know, bringing into this film and, uh, you know, helping us develop the characters, which was a huge part of it. Because like I say, in 20 minutes, you don't have a lot of depth to actually get these characters across. You know, if in an hour and a half film, you've got a lot more time to do that. And Robert was 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 key to helping us, uh, you know, develop that really. And he's a big name. I mean, how, how did you manage to get him on board? It was all down to Rod Street from from Great British Racing. Um, I'd shown him the the script, and obviously, you know, Rod being from GBR I said, "Look, you know, I, I love the idea of this, but it's something that we probably we could help you promote, but we wouldn't be able to help you um, fund it because obviously, the you know, it was a very sensitive subject, and it isn't actually promoting the sport. It's actually showing a darker side of the sport, which I I feel you know the public really needed to see. But Rod said that. Um, you know Robert Bathurst from you know from the fame from Cold Feet who I who I'd known you know um, said he's a huge racing fan and he might be somebody that, that that be worth talking to. So, like all conversations I have with Robert when I get him on the phone, he is a huge racing fan. So we spend the first twenty minutes to an hour talking about horse racing before you actually get into the nitty gritty of, of the film. Really, he's you know he's just loves it. He's an absolute sponge for this stuff. So um, so it was great getting him on board and. Um, you know, he said, look, I don't want to just act in this, you know, can I help you develop the characters? And that's and that's where the key thing was, really, where we, we had Robert on board. And like I said earlier, he was a huge help at uh, building these characters. OK, now, um, some of the people that are in the uh, in the film are actually well, real jockeys. Did they they take much persuading or were they press ganged? <laughs> they weren't press gang no they um they were they were great actually they were you know I, I reached out to a lot of riders and like everything else you know um are you available on this date and then and it was a case of i won't know till the day before till the decks come out you know uh, we had to film it in the winter and obviously the the jump season was in full full flow so we weren't able to um you know get everybody we wanted but uh, the guys that did get involved were, were great um you know we had the likes of will kennedy tom garner uh, Harry Bezik, uh, Charlie Deutsch. And in fact, Charlie Deutsch actually was a body double for Tom, who plays our main character, because Tom hasn't had the the the, the good hidings that jump jockeys have. You know, he hasn't had a broken collarbone or a broken leg and any scars. So um, Charlie Deutsch was our uh, was our body double, really, for that. And um, it was great that Charlie was, uh, you know, was open enough to let us film in his collarbone being, you know, all, you know, all disformed and his, and his leg, you know, the scars on his leg. So it was it was great to uh, to have those guys on board. And if anything, it was great for Daniel, who Daniel Thrace, who plays Tom, the main character, um, you know, him being an actor, um, hadn't had much uh, involvement in horse racing. He, you know, he's from York and he'd been to York Racecourse, but he'd never really um, had any, you know, any experience of, of horse racing. And just finding Daniel himself was a big was a big job for us. We went through, I think, forty auditions to find the you know the jockey to play um, to play to, you know Daniel's character Tom, and. Um, authenticity was really really key to this and um you know jockeys are always on the front foot simon as you and i'm sure you you've worked with many of them before and they seem to be always have a uh, a goal you know whether it be getting to the races riding the race or whatever it is so they always seem to be on the front foot and um many of the actors that i auditioned didn't really have that but daniel had it immediately you know we we, we sent him a scene to do and he just for some reason had that so it was key that we had him, but I think more so that he really dived into the character of talking to jockeys about, you know, what it's like to, you know, the dieting, you know, the uh, constant traveling, what that feels like. 
And I think he found some sort of um, similarities in, in the life of a jockey and an actor because, you know, you're only as good as your last ride, you're only as good as your last role. And um, Daniel found a lot of uh, similarities in that and empathy, I think. And that's what he kind of took on board. And, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, he could be dropped at any point, you know, and, and that's kind of what this, this story is about, you know, about this guy that's... Uh, that's put a lot of time and energy into this horse, and um, you know, cause cause he falls at the last, he's 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 then fired, you know, and um, you know, Dan, Daniel could could empathise with what that can find, kind of feel like, and uh, and I thought he brought a, a great performance to the uh, you know to the film. He, he made my job of directing a lot easier. Well, yeah, and also you being the director, but you also know all about it because you were a jockey uh, for ten years nearly. So, um, I, no, I remember. You were, it was 1995 when you started. No, it was before social media. But I remember distinctly being at the races, and if somebody was perceived to have rid the bad race, I've known people run down to the to the walking back just so they can call the jockey a wanker or something. So it used to happen, but it's not on social media. I mean, you won on your second ride, so yours is probably all positive. But did you suffer any of that? I did, you know, I did suffer a bit, a little bit of abuse. Yeah, I remember falling off one of Brian Ellison's. Actually, it jumped the last fine, but then stumbled after the line, and I, and I just, I, I fell off him. You know, it was my mistake. I just fell off the horse, and um, it was at Hexham, and um, you know that northeast crowd can be uh, a little punchy at times. <laughs> And I remember walking in, you know, Brian Ellison, thankfully, was just a, a dream because I was absolutely devastated, you know what I mean? It's, you know, you don't want to fall off. You don't want to, um, you know, you don't want to lose a race. So, you know, the abuse I got walking in was not good. And luckily, if Brian Ellison was great with me, he kind of protected me on the way in. Um, not all trainers have been like that, you know, I, I have to be honest, you know, it's that they're under pressure as well to have winners. And, you know, the, the jockey is the last man standing sometimes, you know, so they can be the person to be blamed. And, um, but looking enough that, that, that time was, wasn't as, wasn't as bad as some of the stuff I've seen or we've used in the film, you know, we use real tweets and real messages that were sent to jockeys uh, within the film. And um, when I wrote the script, funny enough, I showed my wife, who's not horse racing orientated at all. She's not from the sport. Um, she's a, you know, a, a, a primary school teacher. And uh, when I showed her the script, she said, oh, you know, it's a great script and great story, but you're gonna have to tone the language down. And I said, no, they're actual, they're actual tweets and messages that were sent to jockers. And she couldn't believe it, that this stuff actually gets sent to these, you know, to these guys and girls that, that are just out there trying to do their job, you know, and um, I think I just needed to highlight that, that hate that um, that's on top of what of a normal jockey is like, you know, people don't understand the, um, the constant uh, pressure that uh, athletes are under anyway, because they're, you know, they live a different life to what us normal mortals do. You know, we have pressures at work, but um, you know, it's not there to be seen all the time. You know, it's, uh, you know, you have a bad day at the office as, as, as a sports person. It's kind of uh, more in the public domain and and with social media uh, comes that backlash. And I think that, um, you know, we just need to highlight the fact that it's, uh, that it's some of this stuff, it really affects the, not only the athlete, but the people around them and their families, you know, and some of this stuff was really, really awful what they were, what they were sending and, um could well be the tipping point to some people's uh, mental health and 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 you know the the fall into depression. And I just wanted to highlight that fact that we just need to be a little bit kinder, and we probably need to start holding um, these social media platforms accountable. And you know, and we need to do that. I think. 